Johnny Valentine. I'm the CIO of Thinko and the Claims Tech Lead at ILC. Um, we're here today to talk about self-servicing claims coming off the back of Claims Tech Live. And with me today to talk about is Mike Porter from CoreLogic. Hello, nice to see you uh, again. So probably introduce myself, Mike Porter from CoreLogic Insurance Solutions. I look after our business outside of the US, so international markets. I'm very happy to be here. No, it's good to have you. Um, we're both at home doing this remotely, obviously uh, coming in off the back of a summer break. Have you had a good summer? I have, yes. I was in uh, Cyprus with my kids for a couple for a week and a half, so I had a really good time. Just back, so needed the break. Yeah, day three back for me as well, and I finally oh, got it? emails, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I'm missing the cheap wine of Italy at the moment, so anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But we could talk about wine uh, and Italy and Cyprus all day. But we actually, let's start off with obviously um, what we were here to talk about today, which is Claims Engage. So, what is it really? What does it do? So, well, it's our answer to uh, to allowing the policyholder to have a digital experience online in, in a nutshell. So, we have approached this very much purely from a property perspective. So the difference, I guess, between this and other solutions trying to tackle this problem is that it's built from a property claims perspective from the ground up, which includes buildings and contents um, and trying to ensure that we can provide a digital experience for policy order end to end. So not just notification, not just um, tracking and settlement, but but also all of the stuff in the middle, validation and everything that goes on in that in that journey. So that that's it in a nutshell. It it tries to to complete the entire value chain online. No, it makes sense. If you think about like the quote by journey, the quote mm -hmm. by journey is the same whatever kind of product it is, really. There's details and that leads for a price, and then you buy it. When it comes to a claim, you could either be integrated with a vet or a body shop, or like you say, or sub subsidence expert. It almost makes sense to have the actual product specific to that vertical rather than yes. trying to put something generic when every claims journey is totally different. So what kind of inspired you to build something that was so specific? Well, I think what we've learned, and we've been obviously doing this a long time, you know, two decades now in terms of supporting property claims workflow technology in, in the market and, and multiple markets around the world. And we've, we've seen obviously a lot of, as you say, generic solutions come to market for things like first notice of loss online, registering claims. And some of those solutions have actually expanded further than that into doing some other stuff in terms of distribution, bringing in external data into the workflow. But what we felt was that some of the core stuff about property claims is not being or wasn't being adequately serviced by those solutions. And that is the the, the breadth of complexity. So in, a, in an auto claim, yes, there is complexity, but it's complexity within um, specific uh, types of say damage or the loss type or the circumstances in a property claim it can literally be everything from a house fire to a theft and so trying to cover that range of complexity in a solution that's not specifically designed for property claims is very difficult and that's why people try and stay more generic yeah. they, they kind of try and provide a generic solution that covers as much as possible so that they can increase their sell as many people as possible Exactly right. And, and exactly. Whereas we're saying, well, actually, we think we've got a load of assets in our business that can support that workflow. So we'd rather be more specific, but yeah. better ultimately for that value proposition and that that workflow uh, in property claims. So that's why I think this is the right way to do it. And what inspired us to do it was the basically the lack of what we felt was a compelling solution for home. No, it makes sense. Um... I had a claim on my travel insurance in November from my bank and they were with insurer A and you yeah. can tell the journey was built for travel insurance, which is still yes. quite varied. Obviously you're either stuck or you've lost your luggage. Perfect. The claim was paid out I think within four minutes um, mm. of putting it through. Perfect. They moved provider in February. My suitcase got lost in July and I had to, had to put a claim through uh, and insurer B has gone for a generic solution where the actual journey was terrible. And the money turned up yesterday, uh, so two months later, and it was a simple, it's a simple, just as simple a claim. And I think, I think that's the thing. It's, it's about one of the big things about a policyholder's experience online is consistency. And what people have tried to do is they've tried to put solutions out there which 
I want to say this is going to sound a little more negative than I mean for it to sound, but that ticks a box of being able to register a claim. And that's great. OK, that is useful. People want to interact online. They might not want to call. They might not have the time. It's more convenient, etc. But actually, the dropout rates, the exceptions, the number of times that that journey actually becomes either more traditional, has to go down, um, results in a phone call, results in additional inbound demand from, a, from an operations perspective, is actually very high. And so when we first set out to do this, we wanted to make sure that people, where appropriate, where the risk profile allows, where the, the insurer's philosophy allows, as well as allowing for customer choice, the system can handle as much of it online as possible without them having to drop out. So yeah. they can, now that may, they may even need to stop and start. The system can enable that too. But what it won't do is say, sorry, computer says no. Um, unless that's actually what the insurer deems is appropriate or what the policyholder chooses, which yeah. is, you know, is going to happen in, in certain examples. I think if you're up front with a customer and you say, look, we're going to try to do as much as possible online, but we, this one here, we need to do this. People get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. What people yeah. get annoyed about is they get told to download an app and told we're going to, this is a fully e-ethanol solution. And then suddenly yeah. you're asking me to email an attachment because something's gone wrong. And yet it's that, that customer expectation. So when it comes to your system, then how does that look from that poly order? Some, someone needs to make a claim. So the way it works is we, we've designed it from the ground up to be the standalone for insurers who don't necessarily have a digital journey, fully white labeled. Um, so brand presentation is, is consistent with whatever the brand is that they want to present. Um, um, or it can be embedded within an in existing digital experience. So you might have um, you might have a, an EFNOL process in place. You might have a simple claim registration process. You might have, even if it's just like a My Account or a, or a you know uh, online branded web yeah. presence, cool. it can be embedded into that, and it was designed that way because obviously owning that customer journey from a brand perspective is super important for our clients, and we never want to kind of undermine that. So so that's how it's built. The way that the actual UX works is it 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 tries, and we've done a lot of work with actual consumers in the testing of the design. So it asks basically it asks questions, right, and it and it and it takes them through a journey where it asks the information based on a, a process of elimination of exactly what they, what we need to know about the loss. And throughout that journey, and a, and a lot of people, with, we will be familiar with those types of scripts or questionnaires that we've built for our business users in the UK market in particular, where we're going through a process of elimination, we're trying to capture information, but for the policy holder, it's built into user experience, which is really two things. One, helpful and pro proactively helpful and two reduces data capture in any way possible so we're trying to make this as simple as possible to get the information that we need and no other information so we want to know what we need to know yeah. to do um the validation of the loss but a big part sorry i'll just take a step back a minute big part of this is actually to provide the a visibility for the policy order to their, of their options because once they know that, OK, yeah, we, we've seen a claim, we're going to validate the policy cover, we're going to tell you that you've got an excess, people might decide, actually, I'm not going to claim because it's a small no, claim or whatever. So we, we, we handle that too. Policy validation, validate the loss itself, capture attributes about the loss. Um, it then goes away and uses external data to va perform additional validation as well as fraud checks. So it'll take, you know, data, uh, fraud analytics solution integrations. It's got weather data solution integrations for weather claims. Um, ultimately, to arrive at a understanding of the loss circumstance, then what it can do is say, right, so now we understand that you've got a claim. We've, pretty, we've got a decent amount of confidence on its validation, on its valid. We've got some choices. We can, if we believe that there's a chance that this claim could be class cash settled, then we'll take you through an estimating process for buildings damage. If we think that it's just too complicated, we might send it to a supplier or give you the choice to send it to a supplier. If there's contents items, we're going to allow you to identify the items and ultimately price those items, again, through a partner integration into the platform. So ultimately, what we're doing is we're creating a picture of the cost, yeah. if possible. If not possible, we're going to allow the insurer to decide where that claim, well, let me say that. The insurer configuration will decide what the options are, but ultimately yep. the policy order will choose their supplier partner. So whether that's yep. a loss adjuster, whether it's somebody to actually get them back on their feet, whether it's another type of supplier, we're going to manage that distribution into 
uh, whatever the integrated workflow platform is for that for that um, supply chain. Could be ours, could be somebody else's. Um, but ultimately, we're going to manage the distribution. Long story short, we get to the end, we identify that there is an opportunity to cash settlement. We will provide a cash settlement option and we will ultimately cash settle the claim online, fully digitally, zero touch um, for buildings and content. And I think from what I know of the market, it's the first time that's possible. Lots of people doing that for contents, as you mentioned, in travel, gadget, whatever. For us, we think with the building's damage element, it's the first time that we're going to be able to do that entirely online, which is quite exciting. No, it makes sense. It gives someone the ability that, look, I just want the cash. I'm going to go sort it myself. I know that I can pay someone. I don't want to hassle going for the insurer. Here you go. Perfect. No. Uh, and in the back end, it's got all our estimating expertise. So this isn't just a, we're going to guess. Yeah. Um, you know, this is, we've captured through that UX, the, the size, the complexity, the nature of the damage. They, they they can't see that. They might be answering what they feel are relatively simple questions. But in the background, we're mapping that against our yeah, pricing totally database. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which also means that if we get to an estimate, that's that can then be translated into a future claim solution that's not a cash settlement. So from that workflow, we can push the estimate into a, um, a fulfillment solution. So we can turn yeah. that to a contractor and say, this is what the system has identified as likely to be the damage. And then they can take it from there. So it's quite powerful. No, it sounds it. So obviously you, you go to every single insurance conference at the moment and there are the words AI, uh, yes. image recognition, yes. LLMs. Um, where now you don't need to have AI to be a good solution. I think we all all agree on that one. I think there is a correlation between AI and fundraising. Um, or oh, sorry, <laughs> the, the number of references to AI <laughs> and Yeah, fundraising. how many times can you say it in a sentence? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and comes to how close you are to your funding round. Um, but <laughs> what trends that we're seeing at the moment does claims engage address or use? So we've got a couple of things. We, we've taken the approach of you've got to build the workflow before you can add the functional value, right? So the way I use an analogy when I describe this is we've got to build the train tracks, then you can put trains on it. Mm -hmm. um, we've built the tracks. We've already got some trains on it. Some of the trains are going to be an AI enabled, into, you know, moving into the roadmap in the next year. Yeah. But we've built the core. So what we've basically done is said we're going to take the work workflow, we're going to build the UX, we're going to build out that, and then we're going to work out how can we speed it up? How can we make that? Because that's where the value of AI comes. It's about automating that data capture. I don't need to ask you questions because I can look at an image and answer, right? Mm -hmm. So we've we've actually got our own proprietary models um, where we're doing both um, attribute identification of within images because we obviously have access to a very large number of images um, of damage, not just of properties, but of damaged properties in our data sets, particularly in the US where we're identifying damage types, we're identifying material types from imagery, and then we can turn that into, it's never, you know, I'm saying it's never. Right now, taking that information, turning it into text, using LLMs to describe the attributes of an image, taking that text, mapping that against repair activities is something that is feasible, it's within our grasp. You know, it's not it's not in the solution off the off the shelf or an MVP that was launched in July, but it's very much part of our roadmap to take those things and and speed up the data capture and identification of damage as fast as we can. Not, but but, and a key point here is never at the expense of accuracy or of of quality because we're actually talking about settling claims with this. And so what we've got to do is take baby steps. So at the start, it will be okay. Describe the image. Then it'll be, okay, describe the image, what are the keywords? Then it'll be, now from the keywords, how can we map that against repair, et cetera, et cetera. And for car, now, that's for buildings. And I think, we, you know, having built the railway tracks, we've now got the drains to put on the tracks. Yeah. Some of those can be used off the shelf, day one. We think there's a huge amount of value with what we've delivered in an MVP. Putting buildings and contents together, manage it in a single workflow, all the different types of uh, damage that can be supported is, we think, unique. But what we then want to do is, OK, make it more accurate, faster, using images for things like, you know, metadata um, um, validation of yeah. is this a current image, all that stuff, particularly in a fraud context, is, is kind of expected. 
but but actually going to taking the next step from which is what we describe as image to scope is another step and i think we've the great news is you know four years ago the technology to do this was wouldn't it be cool if we could yeah. the technology to do this now exists what we're doing is actually holding ourselves back a little bit to make sure that the accuracy and the quality and the risk profile of doing it still delivers the value that we want to see for the insurers. So we're, we're taking it appropriately steadily. Now, what, what's kind of, the, from your point of view, the main benefits for the policyholder and insurer when they're looking at claims engage? Good question. I think there's a couple of things that happened. We, we had, you know, going into 2020, we've been talking about doing this for a while, right? And, and it took um, the approach we've taken is deliberate because we're trying to create this uh, in an agile and flexible way. But the thing that kicked it off, and I, I'm going to go to the problem statement and then go back to the question on value. The problem, what kicked it off was in 2020, obviously, the world changed. We had two years of, of you know, rapid requirement for change. That created off the back of that, everybody starting to realize that actually online technology or digital experiences weren't just kind of the sizzle on the stake. They were actually, you've got to be able to do this effectively. And we saw a huge change in people's preparedness to adopt that technology. Um, what then happened was uh, coming out of 2021, people were like into 2022, people were like, right, let's write a strategy. They started writing a strategy. Then inflation hit and everybody went, oh, hang on a minute. Like we've got, you know, we've got a cost challenge. Let's, you know, not not necessarily stop, but let's just be more considered as we execute on our digital strategies and things like that. And so what we thought to ourselves was there's a huge amount of money going into these things, particularly with, you know, whether it's custom builds or stuff like that. We think the space for somebody to turn this into an actual product rather than it be a SaaS product. So not a. I'm going to build something bespoke. I'm going to create something that's um, unique or that's, but, but actually that solves the problem in a, in a faster way. They can say, actually, you don't have to go and solve all these challenges because we've spent the energy and the effort and the money, frankly, to do it. And by jumping on the bus with us, we can, we are going to continue to innovate, innovate. It's the value of SaaS, right? So I think from an insurer's perspective, we can give them access to that digital outcome that they want, but in a way that will continue to improve, will con continue to develop, and ultimately will be cheaper to do because you know the the value return is very high. Yes, you'll have to accept that it's not going to be, you know, bespoke, and that means that there'll be some some element of um, consistency. But actually, the system's so configurable to the work to to the philosophies of the insurers that actually that is the the, the actual impact of that is very low. So the value to them is speed to value in delivering straight through process claims and also distribution of claims into an existing claim supply chain or um, tr more traditional claims um, uh, workflow automatically without having to answer the phone. That, that's the value and the speed of it is the thing that differentiates. The value to the policy order is they get to choose how they interact with their insurance company, right? And, and actually, Choice is the most important thing, not that we're driving down a particular route, but that if you want to meet the expectations of a modern policyholder, people buying and owning houses now, the millennial generation who are into their, I think, early 40s uh, are, I'm not quite a millennial, unfortunately for me, um, but um, Gen Z, the, yeah. I'm, I'm actually Gen X, but thank you. <laughs> 1980, I'm right on the edge. Um, so they um, they have the opportunity to kind of choose how they interact and it meets the expectations that they have of their interactions with other service providers more broadly because that's what's that is should be the table stakes for now now obviously with that comes an incre you know potentially an increased risk of fraud the in increased risk of all the other things but again we've got to adapt to that in the in the build of the product we can't do this unless we have that right, because nobody's going to say, I'm willing to accept that increased fraud risk. So we've got all those things that um, are there. The value to the policy order is actually, honestly, meeting expectations that they've already had for a long time, that the insurance in industry fails to meet consistently. Yeah.
no, there's, there's a couple of things you said that make sense. But firstly, the fraud point. Jimmy could be really hung over one morning uh, working in the office and misses out on a really key red flag that he should have dealt with on the call when he was processing the national claim and he gets yeah. dealt with. So you're only as good when it comes to fraud as your worst claims handler. Um, yeah, yeah, true. But, whereas with technology, you've got consistency and you every single claim is dealt with uh, objectively and you just yeah. keep increasing that level. The SAS point in the speed makes perfect sense. It's probably something I've seen the insurance sector struggling with before. There's this issue thing of bespoke and that they need something they're unique. An insurance company is not a tech company. So the MVP went live in July. Mm -hmm. When is claimed engagement? Is that available now or is that still? So we, we're in um, the actual formal launch of the product is at uh, our interconnect event in September 17th in London. Um, if you've not registered, please go online and register. Um, maybe share some information at the end of the of the call as well in a bit more detail. But we're going to launch it. It's going to be there's going to be demos. Uh, you're going to be able to put your hands on the product at the event. We're obviously going to be showing it on screen as well um, and showing you some of the user experience that we've built. Um, we're working. You know, we're already talking to a number of uh, the UK's larger insurers about how this can help them as part of their broader digital strategy. Um, so I'm, you know, it, it's ready for use today. We're expanding the use cases, the claims, types of claims and, and um, facilitating different integrations. So where, for example, we've built an integration with Ford Provider A um, as our kind of MVP. Another insurer might say, well, actually, I want to use Ford Provider for fraud analysis. I want to use a different company. We, we, we're facilitating those things as well. So so really, it's ready now. Um, and we're quite excited. Obviously, the development cycle for this is, for me, having worked for big technology companies for a long time, the, the best thing about this is the speed that we're able to iterate because we're building it in a true agile with a with a dedicated development team and we're going really fast. So that's quite exciting. But yeah, it, it, come and see us on September 17th. We'll give you a demo live product. So. So the product they see on the 17th of September will be totally different product today because you're continuously developing it already. That's all yeah, we're like we're doing, I think the sprints are like every week. So we're doing, we're introducing new features and functions, but we're also kind of building out a lot of the um, system admin capability as well. So like we're not building it out, we're kind of enhancing it yeah. because, you know, with all things, the, the, the good thing about having done this for a long time and the experience we've got across a whole range of different technology platforms is that it's not just about the feature function there's there's there's, there's what i call functional value and then non-functional value which is functional value is what we're talking about it's you know i'm gonna i'm gonna create an online experience i'm gonna be able to settle claims i'm also gonna push people into an online tracking journey with our other solution link and also potentially integrated into this in the future as well um so that actually my fairly demand across the whole value chain is going to drop i've got all that value right using imagery, automated validation, et cetera. Great. But what's in the back end is all the stuff you've just talked about, about scalability, infrastructure, security, having the data in the same place, making sure it's architecturally sound, making sure it can integrate, it's got a mature API, all that type of thing is yeah. stuff that really, when you get through the sizzle and everybody's like, oh, this is great, I want to use it. And then the, the CTO, the CIO is looking at, okay, but how does it work, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be putting policy all the data there's brand risk here like tell me how this works like we're taking care of that as well so like that that's the from being a mature technology provider we've got that experience of got to do that now you've got to architect it in a way that delivers that non-functional value off the shelf otherwise you're going to hit roadblocks once you get into those engagements i think that's the one of the key things about working in the insurance well financial sector really yeah you can't be a startup offering a, a b2b product if you haven't got that maturity of the the back end yeah. the data security because you're dealing with fda regulated entities yeah so not only is it brand risk it's the ico risk it's the yeah. risk policyholder data being misused there's all of this compliance and you can't be a one-man band or two-man with a great product but actually you've got none of that compliance there that you'll fail every single db question you've got to like say have a mature api with a, in, in, encryption at rest you've got to have authentication yeah. that resets hourly you've got to yeah. have two factual if you don't have those things then you don't have a product unfortunately so there's a lot more work that goes in if you want to be a SaaS provider to the insurance sector up front that no one sees yeah, that nobody you thinks about yeah 
It's boring. And that's why they that's why that cash burn starts going like that. Because <laughs> they realize uh, you know, my speed to revenue, unless I get these things right, uh, is in you know, in the startup kind of environment, speed to revenue is gonna take a real hit. Whereas we're we're like we're lucky because obviously I say lucky, we've built a reputation. It's not luck, right? Um, we've built a reputation of, of of execution quality, right? And that I think is good for us um, because it creates okay. So I've, you've you've done good work for me here. I'm prepared to talk to you about that as well. That's a really it's a good thing. But we still got to earn it, right? We still got to yeah. earn it here as well because um, we've you know one of the one of the things that we've done more recently is the is that enhanced online journey for okay i've got a claim in flight in a traditional fulfillment process like i want to give the policy order access i want to give them a, a, a role in that um and we're enhancing that as well at the same time as building this stuff on the front end as well so there's a lot going on for us in the consumer space right now it's quite exciting yeah, mentioned the 17th of september but you haven't actually told anyone where okay so it's at the brewery in london um which just google the brewery it's the old um i think it's the old uh, whitbread brewery which has been converted into an events venue got participation from 28 external speakers including people from a range of the largest insurers in the market um, as well as a load of other service providers and trying to provide a different perspective we're combining claims underwriting as well as catastrophe risk management in the same event which gives people to the opportunity to kind of um collaborate with people in the workflow and in the in the value chain that they probably don't always speak to which we think is a really great opportunity it's part of why we call it interconnect is because it brings that whole insurance workflow and and, um, an environment and community together um quite a few people from the states going to be here as well as people from european and other international markets so it's a real international event so this is our second year um, doing this format of event um bigger and better than last year and hopefully it's going to be a success so if you haven't registered please register um we'd love to see you so what's the thing you're most looking forward to this year do you know what i was last year i did um i was on stage doing a bit of the mc role um this year i'm not doing that we've got a slightly different approach i'm going to be doing some of the segments and i'm i'm involved but i think my opportunity this year and i'm really happy about that is that i'm going to be able to go out and meet and and spend time with people we've got a, a really highly engaged well like bought in customer base in the UK market. And I think that that's a really great opportunity for me to spend some time with them and my team, which um, is going to be great. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that most of all. Our group CEO is going to be there as well, Pat Dodd, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a really good day. Um, I'm in London that week. I will definitely Please come. come. Yes, definitely, definitely I'll, do. I'll um, look, Mike, really appreciate your time today. Really interesting. It's always good to hear about new technical things are actually good technical things for the sector so really exciting i hope the launch goes well on the 17th and i'll see you there thank you nice to see you thanks Goodbye.